On the phone, it's a pleasure to welcome to the program Marcy Wheeler. She is a uh, the proprietor of uh, EmptyWheel.net. Welcome uh, to the program, Marcy. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right, Marcy, let's uh, get into this. You are, um, I consider you to be uh, one of the most well-versed uh, people on the Internet, and, well, maybe in the worlds on, on this type of stuff. And your, uh, your digging into this is, um, is, is frankly, is legendary, um, in the, uh, at least in the circles that I run in. But um, uh, So let's, let's talk about it. Will you please outline for us uh, what it is that uh, Glenn Greenwald um, uh, published uh, at The Guardian? What it is is called a Section 215 order, which is part of the Patriot Act, which allows the government to get any tangible thing. It used to be called the Business Records Act, but now any tangible thing, including physical stuff, um, so long as they're using it for a counterintelligence or counterterrorism purpose, and they can prove the information is needed because it is, quote, relevant to an investigation. And many of us have been um, suspecting and pointing to abundant evidence that what they've actually been doing is saying, we need to collect a dragnet of information and use it to data mine to find the terrorists in a haystack effectively. Um, and what Glenn published last night was the order that shows that um, the government is doing just that, at least for Verizon Business Services customers now, for a three-month period. Now, uh, and, and the three-month period is actually ongoing right now. As we speak. And so, and now, Verizon Businesses Services, uh, I, I, I've noticed in your writing and on uh, Twitter, you were going back and forth in terms of what, what, what is Verizon Business Services? Does that mean just business, um, uh, or is that, is that some type of uh, company that's just their official title and that's basically everybody's stuff? I actually think this is just a subset of Verizon's um, customers, so they're, they're business customers, okay. right? Um, but what we don't know is whether this is the only order of the kind that's out there or whether there are the other orders that are exactly identical to, for example, uh, Verizon Wireless, to AT&T Wireless, to your phone carrier and my phone carrier, T-Mobile, and what have you. Um, so that's one question we don't know, but it does show definitively that they are doing dragnet collection and focusing on Americans. They actually said, don't give us the information that's entirely overseas. We only want something that involves at least one side in the United States. All right. So now, um, and you were speculating this uh, particularly, um, I think it was um, I, I, uh, months ago when uh, there was an exchange when the uh, NSA head Keith Alexander was uh, on the Hill, I guess this is uh, last March. Um, March of 2012, yeah. And um, there was an exchange between uh, Keith Alexer, Alexander and uh, Congressman Hank Johnson, um, where the NSA denied that it was seeking these type of dragnets. Uh, and at that time, you speculated that, in fact, this was sort of uh, parsing because... The FBI was seeking this and basically routing it to the NSA. Precisely. After um, Bush's illegal wiretap program was exposed in 2005, that happened the day before the Patriot Act was coming up for renewal. And they actually postponed the renewal of it until March. So it came up in December. They postponed it in March. And in March, they actually put some language into place that addresses Section 2 215. So that was the first hint that they moved parts of the illegal... Pro Actually, there was an earlier hint, but that was um, one of the hints that they were moving the illegal program using Section 215 into FBI to NSA, just like, just like it's now been confirmed they're doing. So when the FBI seeks this information, they don't need to go through... Uh, what kind of processes do they need to go through? In other words, do they need to go and go to the to the FISA court? I mean, they've moved this because they're doing an end around, right? I mean, is that basically it? It's not precisely an end around. I mean, it, it is a legal, um, a very thin legal 
sanction for this that Congress has bought off on. I mean, um, Congress has on three different occasions prevented people from including language saying you can only get information on somebody tied to a terrorist. You can't get it for everybody. So so three times Congress has said we're we we want this kind of dragnet to be possible under Section 215. Um, so uh, basically all it is is it gives legal sanction to dragnet that was was happening illegally up until 2006. And and so this is not I mean they're not I mean so people should be clear here. They're not investigating terrorists. They are investigating really everybody who's caught up in this. And we don't know whether or not what we're seeing is really just sort of, um, you know, the uh, basically the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean, this, uh, this one order under 215 could be indicative of orders for every other uh, phone carrier, for every other division of every other phone carrier, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're just, they're investigating Everybody. What they're doing is they're doing. They, they're they're claiming that they can find terrorists by doing data analysis of dragnet collected information. So, I mean, let me give you an example of one of the first times I realized how they were actually using Section Two Fifteen. Back in two thousand nine, Najibul Azaza was the guy who was going to attack the New York subway, right? Mm -hmm. And when the government went to a judge and said, you need to keep him in custody, they said two of his associates bought hydrogen peroxide, large amount, like not unusually large, but bought big bottles of hydrogen peroxide in beauty supply stores in Aurora. That's their basis for holding him in custody. Turns out they were completely innocent. Those, those probably Muslims buying hydrogen peroxide never showed up again in the case against Zazi. Now, but now in this instance where you have a suspect who is being held in custody, the feds say hold this uh, uh, suspect in custody because he has associates, uh, regardless of how far removed, who have bought iodine. <laughs> um, isn't that different, though? Because then, you know, it's one thing to say, OK, we have uh, subject A and we're going to um, basically investigate anybody that has ever come in contact with subject A. In this instance, aren't we seeing basically we're going to investigate everybody. And if we see yep. everybody here who has some type of pattern of behavior that might. I mean, this seems to be sort of like looking at everybody and then profiling in some respect. Profiling based on your on on the kind of calls you make, um, how long you stay on the calls. Um, it may be that you also happen to be a big purchaser of hydrogen peroxide. They can also get, and Robert Mueller has said they can also use these to get um, UPS data, to get FedEx data. So it may be how often you're sending stuff via FedEx. Um, so they're they're basically developing profiles based on completely anonymized information that has that I mean you may have no tie to a terrorist but because of your activity that you look suspicious they're going to send some FBI guys to start investigating you that's what they appear to be doing with this information and that means that anybody that you can become a suspect a terrorist suspect very easily or you know maybe not very easily but based on this kind of crazy algorithm that may have nothing to actually do with terrorism but has to do with the theory of what terrorists act like and, and and in some respects it seems to me that um you're already even prior to being a specific suspect you're already by the nature of the fact that you um you are using a phone in this instance you're already a subject of an investigation. I mean, it seems to me that the investigation starts the moment they start culling information about you. And then um, if the algorithm uh, pops, then you're a suspect. Uh, and and then, then you're off to the races. But again, to get this Section 215 order, what, what, what does the FBI have to do? Almost nothing. I mean, all they have to do is prove that there's an investigation and there's a standing terrorist investigation um, that is kind of the bucket that the FBI uses to put all of their all of their general terrorist investigation stuff into. Um, and then they have to argue to a judge that this is relevant to it. And given that they have convinced FISA court judges now for seven years that this algorithm analysis actually does help them find terrorists, it's not clear that it does, but the judges have been told that. Um, 
then it becomes relevant, and then they get to do this kind of dragnet, and and that's all it takes. It doesn't, um, you know, it it doesn't that no specific tie to a terrorist is required. 